you mentioned, you know, being pushed away in a dirt car and, and you're already thinking about F1. What, was that the dream since you first laid eyes on it? Like, when did, when did that become ingrained in your mind? Like, I'm going to be an F1. Well, you have to go back. I mean, how it's Formula One that I was, you know, Aldo and I were gravitated to the sport because that's where we were exposed. Yeah. With, you know, at, at a young age, at, at, during our teenage years in Italy. And uh, coming to America, obviously, uh, you had to, you know, once I got into racing, once you get to the top level, um, Formula One was in my head. I said, hopefully, God willing, some, you know, someday I'll have the opportunity. And listen to this, in 1965, I was, I finished third here, mm -hmm. and I began, it was Rookie of the Year. And throughout the month, I really tried to befriend Jim Clark and Colin Chapman. Yeah. And, you know, there was a lot of conversation and so forth. And, uh, and so, and I have some nice photos, you know, together. And, and, um, and so at the banquet, you know, Jim Clark won, I finished third. So uh, at the banquet, when we were saying our goodbyes, I said to Colin Chapman, I said, Colin, someday I'd like to do Formula One. He said, Mario, when you think you're ready, you call me and I'll have a car for you. Can you imagine? Hearing that. What those words meant. Oh man. You know, and, uh, and so again, so I said, now, now I gotta start road racing. <laughs> <laughs> and can you imagine like um, uh, in, in, in the 63, two years before, there was only one road race in mid midgets, we ran Lime Rock, Connecticut, and I won it. <laughs> and then in 65, I, I lobbied like crazy, you know, to USAC, you know, to, you know, to expand the series, you know, to be as versatile as possible, because we had, you know, we had part of the championship was, uh, uh, all, of course, all the ovals, but then also was the dirt, dirt right. races, you know? so. And, and they had one road race, which was here in, um, you know, near Indianapolis at um, uh, Raceway Park. Yep. And they had one road race, and I won that. You know, so then they started in the IndyCar, they started, you know, they, we started going to Canada, you know, to Mossport, to saint uh, Then we started going to uh, Riverside and, and so all of a sudden, you know, I was much more part of that. And that's when, you know, Dan Gurney actually used to do a lot of these road races in, you know, in Indy cars because he was doing Indy also, you know, uh, sporadically. And um, so, uh, and then I, I, you know, was able to join the Le Mans program for Ford, which was an incredible amount of testing uh, being done there. And I said, I'm available for all of it, you know. And uh, I befriended, we became very good friends with uh, Bruce McLaren. And uh, he and I, you know, obviously, after day of testing, we used to spend time, we'd go to dinner and talk, and I used to just kind of uh, go into his brain, you know, and, this, and, and he was a very technical driver, so I, I felt that I, I learned quite a bit from him. I think I had the high-speed stuff, you know, pretty well, you know, okay. But I just needed all the healing, all the break, you know, all the approach to the hairpins and all that sort of thing. And um, he taught me a lot of that. And then, you know, we won Sebring together in 67. And then in 68, I called Colin Chapman. Yeah. And uh, sure enough, I said, I'd like to do the last two races of the season. And, uh, and he, he said, right, he said, I'll have a car for you. So the rest to last race was uh, Monza yep. and Watkins Glen. Mm -hmm. And so I said, great, Monza, you know? And uh, so obviously we were gonna do a test. We did that a uh, week, week before the race. And, uh, and it went really well. You know, the comparison I had at that time was an Indy car, which, you know, uh, obviously much heavier car and, and uh, and the Formula One car felt so nimble, so responsive. Mm -hmm. I felt so good in it. And uh, I set a good time in Monza 
fact, I was quicker than Chris Heyman had been with a Ferrari four days earlier. And, but there was a, there was a glitch here. Uh, to race in Monza, we had to uh, come back here and race at the Hoosier 100. Yeah. On the dirt, because I was going for the championship, and so was Bobby Unser. Bobby Unser, yep. And so uh, I got Bobby Unser a ride in a BRM so he could drive a Monza, so we could do slipstreaming, because in those days, every single time you were on the track for practice, the time counted for qualifying, by the way. Oh. So we were able to put in a qualifying time on the first practice of the Friday, and then we had a plane at 2.40 to come to the States and race Saturday and then go back to race in Italy on Sunday. And, uh, and we had an agreement with the um, track promoter, you know, Bacigalupi, and also uh, the FIA arm in Italy, Count Lorani, that they would waive the 24-hour rule because, uh, you know, USAC, you know, like Indy, they were part of the FIA, you know, uh, part of part of FIA, so they had to adhere to the rule, which was a 24-hour rule. You could not race within 24 hours, uh, you know, uh, in any major event, so to speak. So they were going to waive that, and, and we did that. Bobby and I, we qualified, and uh, in fact, it was quite a bit quicker, you know, today, but nobody's really going for it, you know, the first practice. But nevertheless, uh, we come back. In fact, I finished second to Foyt here at the Hoosier 100. And uh, we go back, and uh, my car was seventh on the grid, even with the time that I set in the first practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there was a protest. And to this day, I don't know exactly, but I think it was Ferrari that protested because you know they prevail. And uh, um, the only one that could, uh, there was no one that could speak Italian at the protest because. Uh, and so Colin Chapman, you know, he was there and he said, well, can, cannot drive. And uh, so we didn't, we didn't get to start that race. And, uh, but the first start, and it was a Watkins Glen. And uh, I put the car on pole there. And I was surprised myself, like, can, but you can't believe uh, the feeling that I had at that point. And who was next to me? It was Jackie Stewart, world champion, yeah. you know. Uh, so, um, you know, to, to, to have those moments, you know, in your career, I mean, um, you can just, <laughs> uh, you can't believe it, you can, you know. Uh, am I taking it for granted? I mean, I'm so fortunate, so blessed, you know, to have had those opportunities. I want to unpack those two starts, or the, really the one start, but the attempt at Monza. I heard there's a story where you and Bobby were stopped by security going into the track. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what was the story? <laughs> uh, we have, uh, it was, uh, we, we didn't have our credentials with us, you know, even though a mechanic picked us up yeah. at the airport. And uh, in fact, we had to pluck him out of the seat because he wasn't fast enough. <laughs> Bobby plucked him out of the seat for me <laughs> to drive. So we get to that, and it was, um, and, and the, the Carabinieri, which is the military, actually were the, the ones you had to go through there. You have to have credentials. And I go there, and I s nothing. And, and, the, and Bobby said, don't go, don't go. He said, the guy's got his hand on his gun. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, I took a fortune I could speak Italian, you know, and, uh, but they, you know, they got us, uh, but they, uh, you know, at all, they didn't put us in jail. <laughs> but he gunned it, right? But he, I gunned it, yeah. It just took off. Uh, that had to be a stressful start to the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> nothing new? Is that pretty typical then? <laughs> oh, man. And we had moments like yeah. that. Yeah. How was it traveling back and forth? Like, did you get jet lagged, like the time zones throw you <laughs> off, having to do this? You know, the good thing for me, I think I've always been a good traveler because I could, yeah. could sleep on a plane and so forth. And, you know, you, you make the best of it. You know, what else? You have no other choice, you know. But, uh, and, you know, we first class, so at least, you know, you had, you know, a decent seat and so forth. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it, I remember that when we left 
after the, the Hoosier 100, you know, we had to be on the plane. And uh, we, uh, I, I, I don't remember this clearly. I think that uh, uh, we borrowed, uh, I think, a lira from Roger Penske. I, I, I'm not 100% yeah. sure, but I know we did something like that to get us to Boston. Because Boston had a TWA flight that time at 8 o'clock at night to go to Milan. <laughs> and that's what we did. That's what we took. And, uh, but we were there, you know. <laughs>